I, uh, I you know, I'm, uh, I could uh, talk to you <laughs> for, you know, hours and, and, and just go down the paths. But I know we have um, uh, some students and we also have one of our instructors from- Oh, cool. Now tell me, and your students are, is this a, a, a regular group you have month after month, year after year? Tell me about that. Well, this, it's Performing Arts Studio S. I started a program years ago um, called Meet the Biz in 2008, mm -hmm. because I was teaching, I was waiting tables when I first got to LA because that's what actors do. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily I got to dress up in a character outfit. I had a little hat and I was Jim Bob Joe, the country farmer. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and I'd go up to the table and say, uh, today's, today's special is fresh fish. It's so fresh it jumped out of the water and kissed me. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Kind of stuff. But I also would sing at the tables and this and that. Anyway, <clears throat> long story, I'm trying to make it short here. I met this wonderful woman, Mary Rings. She says, come to my acting class. I came and the doors opened and there was the Born to Act players. I fell in love. It was 30 actors who happened to have Down syndrome. I uh, was an assistant there uh, for 10 years. And wow. while I was doing that, I was also teaching my own classes. And then I said, you know, we're all actors. Let's bring people together with and without disabilities, black, white, uh, you know, the, the list goes on. Um, I started teaching my own classes, Meet the Biz, where I brought in different people to teach. And then I heard about this wonderful place called Performing Arts Studio West for years. Finally went there, walked in, they had this big, big, room and then a hallway and then another big you know uh, um, uh, a studio not a studio but more of a, a theater mm -hmm. and then you go out of that then they have another whole building with a dance studio so this is a place where um john paces uh created it and and formed it i think it was 22 23 years ago and they have singing they have acting they have dancing it's monday through friday um and right now we've been doing it online Yes. Hopefully, September, we're going to start opening it up slowly. Wonderful. We wonderful. have over 100 students. And today, we have one of our uh, wonderful music teachers, uh, which I will let in now. His name is right. Joe CB. You're, you're, the, you're the tech wizard here doing all this, George. Magic. Magic. Cool. Mr. CB is coming in. And he has been with Performing <laughs> Arts. I've been there, I think, about seven years. And Joe has been... God, he'll, he'll say, how long have you been there, Joe? Oh, I just got on a little while ago. <laughs> there you go. What's yeah. happening, you guys? Hey. Hi there. Hey. hey, how you doing, Bob? Joe, nice to meet you. I'm doing great. Good afternoon. Are you, um, are you, are you uh, ensconced somewhere? Are you at home? Are you in a studio? Where are you? You got some. I'm, I'm at home. I'm in yeah. my, uh, I have a little home project studio. In I my... see that behind you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, normally I, the studio is at performing arts, uh, but I, I moved some of the stuff here so I could continue at home, you know? So, you know, it, this, this pandemic made us all have to rethink everything, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. We, and, you know, nothing wrong with that. Uh, no. I know you've uh, probably you've written down a lot of things, and uh, uh, it's uh, yeah. I, I we got to you know just talking about our little group. We got some things uh, sort of working for the future. Thanks to that, a couple of people want to talk about some story ideas or you know song ideas, things like that. So yeah, um, it's been good. I, we're not. Uh, we're not hoping for an, an additional 18 months of it. I think we've had enough of it, but- I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think for now, we're ready to move to the next step. <laughs> I think everybody is. I think we're all yeah. happy towards the, uh, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, so to speak, yeah. you know? So, yeah, so you, I was you, just- you're, uh, Are you like a music instructor, a vocal a instrument, what? Um, well, I'm a, you know, I, I came out to LA originally to be an artist, you know, um, um, I was a member of a band uh, in the 80s that was managed by Kiss's manager, Bill Coyne from Kiss. Oh, sure, yeah. And, um, and you know, we got, we got a record contract and uh, we got signed. And, uh, and then, unfortunately, uh, after all, the seven-year journey of trying to get a record deal, we finally get a record deal and we, uh, 
we disband it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that that's the unfortunate part of the music business. Yeah, but, yes, uh, it is. Yeah. But I I ended up coming out here as an artist, but ended up really loving being in the studio and writing for other artists more. So mm -hmm. I love to be on stage, but I really love being in a very uh, air conditioned environment with a nice cup of coffee. <laughs> and if I make a mistake, I can just hit undo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a you're... lot less stressful for some reason, <laughs> for me anyway. Uh, yeah. You know? So yeah, I've been doing that. It's been a lot of fun, you know? I mean, I don't have any giant hit songs under my belt, but I do have a lot of music on film and television. And um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That feels good, doesn't it? To, to, to do a, um, a little underscore or something and, uh, and have it work. That's a lovely feeling. I had, I had that experience a little bit up in Seattle, uh, a part of my experience there while before I moved here. Uh, doing a little bit of just underscoring and, you know, um, game music and theme, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. It's fun. And it's huge, you know. There's just all oh. kinds of opportunities in there. You can be so busy, you know. Yeah. But I, still, I, mean, I still love what I do now. But on stage and all, it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah. we're, uh, we're pretty lucky to be able to, to still do that. So that's our choice right now. That's wonderful. Yeah, I was just looking at your um, your your history here. Oh my God! I mean, you, you guys have done, you know, uh, as you know, the brothers four um, amazing things. I mean, incredible. <laughs> Kudos to you. You know, thank you. Um, <laughs> you have a wonderful, a rich history of uh, you know so much. You know, so much work. It's well, thank you. Yeah, we uh, we were uh, we, you know, we don't often dwell on those things but once in a while it's fun to look back on on those sort of historical things i must say you know when we one of our most exciting things ever was right at the beginning when we were invited to sing for uh, jfk's inaugural oh, and man. uh and that was uh, unforgettable you know literally unforgettable I, it must have been it must have been surreal yeah and uh unfortunately there's the other <clears throat> other side of that story when we were uh, asked to do the concert, the memorial concert in Dallas, uh, mm. the next year. Oh, yeah! Wow! And also, Gosh. you know, we had we <laughs> back in nineteen. Also, I'm just thinking about the '64. Mm -hmm. um, Ed Sullivan ran into us on the street in New York. When we oh. we used to live in New York. That was when we were there for about four four, four or five years. And uh, yeah, he said, "Well, boys, I'm I'm." Uh, I've got this uh, this TV show coming up, and uh, that I'd like you to be on. But in addition to that, I want you to join me. I'm doing a special charity uh, concert at mm -hmm. the Paramount Theater in New York City, and it's their final concert in uh, in America. And I want you to open for the Beatles. <gasps> oh so my God! We said, "Yeah, I think we can make time for that." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's in my uh, my schedule's open for that. Yeah, yeah I, I think wonder. so. Yeah. Oh, I think see. we said yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what we answer. <laughs> oh <laughs> we'll my god. there, Ed. Yeah. So those are yeah. You're you know, we're uh, the nice part of it too was that being four people and good friends from the beginning, we could share all that and kind of dissipate any of the sort of goofy, aren't you really hot stuff things? You know, we were four yeah. guys just enjoying it and. Uh, 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 pretty, pretty even keel, I would say. So I think that served as well through the years too. That's wonderful because it's it's you know being in a band. I'm sure you know. I mean, God, uh, uh, being in a band is like being in a five way marriage sometimes, or yeah. you know, however member, many members you have. Yeah. And yeah, people's yeah. people's people's tastes change, and they want to try different things, and they want to. Yes. Yeah. And and they don't they don't always progress at the same uh, speed as you do. And uh, that can cause sometimes friction. It's so hard yep. to, um, you know, for, to keep everybody on the same page all the time. Yeah, precisely. Uh, and, but a part of, and maybe you even impart this to students when you talk, a part of yeah. this creativity is that, that uh, you should be open to those, those changes, those tidal shifts, you know, things. And if, Hopefully, and we always had the good fortune in all of the, the membership all down down through the years, including especially now with my guys. 
yeah. Mark and Mike and Carl, uh, we listen to each other and uh, that we respect each other and we respect the music and nobody's saying, oh no, do we have to sing that song again? No, we do it again because for a lot of people, that's the first time they see us do it, right? I mean, you, you have yeah. to always remember that. So those kind of things kind of keep your, keep an even keel and uh, yeah, but it is, you know, there's no, there's no textbook. You're right. There's no, yeah. you're dealing with, with uh, people uh, traveling, working, uh, you know, literally 24 hours a day. So it can yeah, and then they, they all have their own universes too, when they're not. Absolutely. Yeah. They yeah. have their, uh, they have this whole other life that they yeah. have to deal with, you know, yeah. and, and that can be, that can be really hard, you know, um, it, let's write really a song takes, about it. We should write a song about it. I think that's a good we thing. definitely should. <laughs> yeah, uh, I you know I mean I I I live to write songs. That's like my that's my you know my whole passion. You know, it's, well, we, it's so nice to start with zero and and then actually have it. Uh, you know, it starts out as intellectual property, ends up being something you can share with the world and touch people yeah, yeah. you've never met before. Is and and that's such a that feeling is just there's no other feeling like that. there's no other feeling like it to see the instant to to see the response and the reaction to your work yeah yeah it's yeah a very special thing yeah well i've i listened you know, to the uh i listened to the brothers four you guys were amazing beautiful work and oh well, thank you you know yeah um you know when i i, I was uh when i i lived in north carolina Asheville, before i moved here Oh, cool. Asheville yeah. Junction, Swannanoa Tunnel. Yeah. I, well, my, my aunt my aunt owns a resort in uh, Brevard, North Carolina. And um, I went out there to visit her for a little vacation, ended up staying there for five years. And uh, <laughs> I loved it. I mean, I loved it. And I, 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 I was, you know, playing music there, but I also became a sound engineer. And I did sound for lots of, uh, you know, really famous people. Arlo Guthrie, uh, sure. I did, you know, a bunch of people. Came through uh, Sarah McLaughlin, Paula Cole, a bunch of people, more modern uh, artists. And um, that's where I really got my learning experience. But what I was going to say was, I that was my first real introduction into like a lot of folk music, acoustic music and bluegrass. Uh huh. Yeah. And oh, when I when I just like, you know, even though I'm a rock and roll guy at heart, um, I love bluegrass. I just, I, I just, there's something about bluegrass that just, I just, I love the, I just love it how they all just stand around a microphone and, yeah, they, you know, they, they rely totally on dynamics. That one totally on dynamics talk, and, the, and also those high, high harmonies, it, everything just soars, doesn't it? Just fly. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, the, uh, Mark, our guy is a really good five string player. And so we, we do a, a couple little blue little touches of bluegrass we try to do it all you know in yeah a, yeah that's in a, great in a two-hour night so uh, it's it is fun to do that absolutely yeah um, i that was my first i mean i of course i heard you know country music and, and bluegrass but i did sound for a lot of these bands like you know um um, um what's his name um one of the most famous bluegrass guys um well in, well, there was Earl uh, Flatt and Scruggs, maybe those guys, or maybe the Dillards. You ever work with the Dillards? Not, not them. Uh, yeah. uh, Ralph Stan. Uh, Stan uh, oh, well, oh it was Ralph Stanley. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I did sound for him there, and um, and uh, a couple other bands. I mean, well, it was so prevalent in North Carolina. Yeah. You know? Well, you were working with the royalty there. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing. It was amazing, and I think that was like. I was exposed to so much variety of music there that it just really opened my palate a lot more than from being a kid in Philly, you know. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Bob, you know what's one wonderful thing that Joe does because he does the music classes every week, Monday right. through Friday, and he writes songs with the students. And we have a, a couple of the students here today too we're gonna bring on. Um, yeah. And it's, it's just, it's truly a family what we have here. Oh, there they are. There's one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we have Devon Morgan. Hey, uh, Devon. Hey, Devon. <laughs> there's Devon. And then uh, we also have Patrick Story and, and Jim Story here coming on. There we go. And they are all so incredibly talented. There they are. All right. 
There we go. Let me get Patrick in here. <laughs> there we go. Everyone, Bob Flick. Hi, all. Hi, Bob. Hi. Great to great to see you guys. At, at, and thanks for uh, taking your time to be here. This is fun talking music. This could be a nine or ten hour show. You realize? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I know when you get when you get a bunch of people talking shop, it's a yeah. it's it, you know. You better pick a comfy chair and sit down because it's going to be a while. <laughs> okay, so now, Joe, tell me, do you do you uh, do songs that they uh, sing and play, or sing, or both, or or which? Uh, uh, tell me. Oh uh, well, a, a lot of our guys are incredible singers, and we have some amazing singers. Um, but what I do mostly with them is I do songwriting with them, and I uh -huh. do a couple. Uh, I do a couple exercises with them, like a couple of them. I do this one class called ghostwriting where they listen to like a song in the top 10 billboard and they got to change all the words in the chorus with their own original words. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. yeah. And, and, it, and it really helps towards what I like to call the first verse curse. I don't know if you ever get yeah, this. I hear you completely, yeah. yep, yeah. You put all your best stuff in the first yeah, verse up to the chorus and then you yep. go, what do I say mm. now? Mm -hmm. What do I say? I said up, everything I wanted to say. Yeah, you end up saying it all again. Yeah. Right. So um, this is like one of those little Jedi mind trick exercises to kind of get you over that, you know, so because you're you're listening to a song that you might have grown up listening to. And now all of a sudden you have to unthink it and write your own words. Yeah. And and I like them to have the same amount of syllable bounces and everything. Yes. Sure. So like when the, when, the, when the original singer starts and when he stops, it should be the same amount of, of yeah. words. Well, you so, know, one of, the, one of the challenges to writers everywhere uh, is just uh, a prosody, you know, how the syllables fall, because you don't want to uh, uh, have some sort of emphasis that you never hear. Emphasis? No, you don't ever say that. You say the emphasis. Yeah, yeah, yeah emphasis. So, yeah, so that's one of the things, if you can impart that on people to listen to and learn, and they either sing it conversationally or uh, create a new rhythm with a with a vocal sound. Then they then they've got something, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll that's one of the exercises. And then another exercise is part part one of that series is called uh, Picture This, and I give them a photograph of something. Usually it's something very thought provoking, but it's an just an image, no words, and they have to write a chorus. Wow just looking at that image so that that's two of the exercises and then we write a melody on friday and then <laughs> I love then it. i get into production on the different days so we, we go into a song i show them how i lay the song out in a pro tools folder um how it goes from the writing to the production phase and that's a big deal especially today because yeah music and pop today is so produced that you can write the song on a piano or a guitar and then not even use those instruments when you go to actually record it. Yeah. So I, I, I have a question. I see your guitars behind you. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. Bob, what made you out of all the instruments you could have chosen? Why a bass? Wow. Um, well, I guess, you know, no one's ever asked me that, first of all. Um, <laughs> let me think about that. I, probably because we were a quartet, right? We were four guys singing, learning how to sing together. And we just very simple, uh, at that time, four string guitars and a, and a four string banjo, tenor banjo. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed logical that we needed um, a little bit of, not quite a fifth voice, but a bottom, some sort of a root feeling on it so all right. i ever learned to play was just just the roots and stuff you know um a little sometimes you know you get a little fancy you do some fill stuff like that i, well, I have to quick story one of uh, spike lee's dad bill lee was one of my bass teachers in new york and he was a, a bass player for harry belafonte and and our vocal arranger milt oaken did all of harry's conducting so we hooked up and uh and Bill told me, he says, once in a while, you can throw just a little double time or something in, just to let it feel just like a little bit of the, a little bit of Calypso Beach is washed up into you, just a little bit of a, of a little. That's cool. Beach. And don't overdo it, he said. 
Uh, but I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll let me let me try that. So I've kind of done that. Uh, I I never get a bass solo, which I like to bring up quite frankly with my guys. But mm -hmm. I do <laughs> never get to uh, play anything but just uh, the basic notes, and that's what it's all about. It's there, just as the bottom, you know. It just feels nicely. And, and that's and, that's as important as everything else. Yeah. And I can't play, I can just play a stand. I can't play the electric bass. Well, I can, but I can't sing and play it, you know, at the same time looking down. So, uh, so the, wow. that, that big stand up bass is, uh, it's actually, it's a part of our group's um, silhouette, actually, that sort of that, the ba the four guys and, the, and that bass instrument standing there. So, yeah, I guess I'm, I guess I'm, I guess I'm locked in, David. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was going to actually ask a similar question, and that was about whether you also play electric bass or just the stand-up bass. And it seems like the stand-up bass is so much more difficult because of the no fret situation. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got a fretless uh, honer, you know, that I played electric. That's kind of fun. I recorded a couple of things with it, but uh, no, I just, uh, you know, by now after doing it for a while, as you can imagine, it's it's sort of instinctive, so I don't have to look and all, and I don't think about it, you know, but uh, no, you, I, I can't do it. I can't do it any other way. <laughs> I, I would be lost without frets, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I would be lost. I'd be crying. Where's my frets? Oh, my God. <laughs> Patrick, do you have a, a, a question? He does. He does have a question. Patrick? Okay. Here we go. Go ahead. If you had become a musician. A look in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. But he's also reading it off of his page here. Oh, God. Go okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I want you to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the camera and the page. Okay. Ready, set, go. If you had become a musician, what do you think you would have done? And do you have any regrets? Wow. Well, first of all, I have no regrets for the choices I've made. Um, and a great deal of that was because I had friends and most importantly, family all along the way uh, who were encouraging and said, go for it if that's what you mm -hmm. want to try. And, you know, all of us should should give it a shot. If you if your dream is to do something, if it doesn't work, you you can always say I tried. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, what I would have wanted to do originally, no, you know, I was always, as I was telling David earlier today, I, I was a, as a little kid doing magic shows and, and record pantomime and little comedy shtick, you know, for the USO shows around Seattle. So I guess I always wanted to be on stage. I go row the boat ashore,
my favorite singer is Ariana Grande. And that she came to my middle school. I think it was like around, two, I'm gonna say 2000, uh, maybe 2005, I'm sure. I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while. Mm. And then she always to tell me to never, to, you know, to inspire people to follow their dreams and to be the best person that they can be. You know, like stop trying to sing a song how they sing it. Cause you know, they want you to sing it the way you want to, like the way you like sing it, how you would sing a song. Find your voice. My question to you is that, um, have you ever written like, have you ever written songs and doing them in front of people at, a, at like a live concert? Yes, the answer is yes. And uh, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a remarkable experience when, Anyway, <clears throat> being in front of people, <clears throat> excuse me, in a live concert is a, is a great experience anyway, but when you can, uh, can uh, proudly say to people, here's, a, here's something that uh, I created that, uh, you know, I want you to listen to it, has a, <clears throat> has a message in it or has a feeling. And when people hear that, it's a great feeling. And uh, that's a part of what I want to continue to do. And I can hear in your, in your question, there's, there's no question that uh, you want to continue doing that, that you want to shape things in your own voice, with your own thoughts, with your own uh, purpose, and uh, with your own questions. It's okay to ask questions of people of the world, and uh, sometimes you get an answer, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't. And, uh, and uh, sometimes you'll even amaze yourself when you're sitting around writing. I think, Joe, you'll, you'll maybe back me up on this. That yeah. You'll find yourself expressing things that, oh, my goodness. Where did that come from? And oh, uh, when you're you cleaning find, your own closet. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and this comes from just sitting down and saying, uh, you know, you don't always have to wait for inspiration. You know, there's a great deal to say for, for setting a time of, of, of every day to sit down and like go to the office and say, it's time to, uh, to work on this. And sometimes magical things happen that way, but you got to give it time, give yourself time and um, give yourself respect. Bob, that's that's some great advice. Yeah. What heals you? What makes you feel healed? What makes you feel like, yeah, that you could breathe? Well, I suppose uh, sitting back uh, at the end of a uh, of either a mixing session or a recording session and saying, yeah, that's the way I want it to be. Uh, maybe that applies to anything in life, a relationship uh, uh, with your with your son or daughter, or with your wife, with your mother, father, and say, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say to that person at that time. To to uh, maybe to have no doubts about something that feels good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you know everything, but right. that means that uh, you can uh, you can be prepared along the way. To, um, to acknowledge things that good things happen. That's good. We'll put that in the bank and go on to the next, the next thing. You know, you just keep going. That's what it is. Hey Bob, I got a question for you. It's almost similar to that. Um, now, when you guys write songs, now, um, when, when the band, is, is it a band effort? Do you, do you all write together? Or do you go home and come up with something and say, hey, guys, I got something. Check this out. And you start to just jam on it. I mean, how does your, how, what is your process? I think most of it comes from each individual who will bring an idea to the group, you know. Yeah. Um, back in the early days, when we first started the Brothers Four, and we, we still do, we yeah. rely a lot on uh, traditional music sources, as you know, sure. a great American songbook. songbook, actually the great American folk songbook, you know, it's where we right, yeah. our, our music. And, uh, and these are, it's an endless source of, uh, of stories and of, uh, fables and romance and uh, and adventure and uh, scoundrels and the troubadours everything you know so yeah at the beginning we would uh, we'd find something like that a sea shanty or something and all you know get around singing it and and pretty soon we would have contributed things from one guy or another and we created uh, our own version our own take on it and it would be then uh, a, a step in what's called the folk process, you know, to evolve into 
you would bring something else out of that traditional source. So that happened a lot then. Uh, presently now, um, a lot of the guys do a lot of writing and uh, you know, each, of, each of my guys uh, does recording and writing and composition on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, they like to do projects on their own and uh, once in a while bring to the band and we'll incorporate one or two of those. So, you know, um, we just say yes to everything. That's, I think that's our secret. Yeah. Now, do you have a studio at home as well? Mm. Are you... I have a, not a studio. I've got some computers and stuff and synths and yeah. things like that. But uh, I always go and finish it up in a real studio. And, you yeah. know, we still, uh, how strange is this? We still like to go in with everybody at the same time playing together. How about that? Well, well that's beautiful. <laughs> I, I, I love that, you know? <laughs> Do you ever enjoy playing on your own or do you prefer playing with the group? Well, it's a little hard. If you can get me a gig as a solo bass player somewhere. I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You can see me on a, on a, on a, on a, in a canoe, right? With the bass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the back of a horse. Yeah, doing ballads. If you uh, uh, <laughs> with an upright bass. <laughs> Patrick, do you have another one? That was his, actually, that was his only. I love it. Question. Oh, good. That he was asked, earlier. Great. He asked me about, because he was curious about how many years of this performing and stuff. Because, um, so he was, he was asking, I couldn't tell exactly what he was uh, thinking, but I think it was something along the line of, do you ever get tired of the performing? You know, <laughs> years of doing this and yes. does it ever get tired and you think, oh, <clears throat> not back on the road to do concerts again? And Yeah, well, I tell you, in our case, I can speak clearly for all four guys. We never get tired of it. The, the biggest challenge really is just some of the, uh, some of the, some of the new wrinkles in travel, you know, other than that, when you finally get there and uh, set up to do the show and meet the people and all, it's the best job in the world. For those students out there, because we have over a hundred at Performing Arts Studio West, we have Meet the Biz, we have YouTube Land, those students who are wanting a career in the music and the arts, what advice would you give them? That's a hard question to answer, and I've had it. It's not a. It's not a question that we that we uh, that we don't get fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people come up and say, I've got these songs, what do I do with them? For example, it's hard to, the first, first thing you say is just don't give up. And uh, because music is a great way to, at the very least, if, especially if you're a, a guitar player or instrumentalist of any kind, it's a great way to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to be with yourself and even sometimes surprise yourself as you know as we talked about Yoba, about about what you what you come up with uh mm. in terms of a subject or a rhyme um so it's all good uh, just to be with yourself to be creative is a good thing to do so don't give that up and also don't give up the opportunity to uh, to meet with other people you know um i'm not suggesting that you go out and sign deals with people right away because I mean, you always have to be careful with that you know, mm -hmm. but try to meet a lot of people. Um, and if you can latch on with a group of people who you like, maybe he or she is a producer or director or writer, or a, just a, a vision, a visionary that thinks about an idea for a story or, or, or a song. And if you can just stay with those people, you know, that little, sometimes those groups of people grow through an age and develop to a point where they all through network and all you stay together and you find common things you can work on as you mature and as you get more skilled and more aware of the world and all um it's a great education music and arts um you know personally i hate to see it diminishing as it is in in schools uh and it's so great that your that your whole school exists like this this, this whole environment exists so yeah it just helps this, the arts help just in life, don't they? Just to, how to make decisions and how to deal with people. So uh, don't give up. The uh, strangest things can happen just right around the next door, you know, right around the next corner, for sure. 
Yeah, that's so true. And some music that some music that I listen to it kind of defies who I am as an yeah as a as an, as an artist. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And and through that, <clears throat> you sometimes <clears throat> excuse me, you, you can you can sometimes question yourself and say, wait a minute, why do I believe that? And then you'll find somebody else who's expressed it in a song or in a poem. And you say, yeah, that's a, another good way to look at it, right? I mean, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, because it's like some music that I listen to, I can totally relate. Like, because like some songs that I, they kind of tell me about life in general. And yeah. like, what, I think one of the songs I, I think one of my favorite songs I love to listen to is, um, I would say Be Good To Me by Ashley Tisdale. And that took me back to when no one was actually good to me when I was like, when I was getting picked on in middle, yeah. you know, middle school and high school. So yeah, yeah, that t- those are tough years. Yeah. 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 Um, then, yeah. Thank then, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are such a healing force. And um, again, for the visit again, uh, to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, it just, we love having you and-, oh, and thank you. Next time I'll bring the bass. Uh, <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> but it's nothing about the bass. It's the bass. What is that song? Yeah. Nothing. It's all about that bass. bass. All about, about the bass. bass. I'm the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, John, our, uh, from Performing Arts Studio West, who is the creator of, of this wonderful land that we are lucky enough to swim in, he oh, yeah. br- brought up one question about that movie about that was a takeoff, takeoff on the four, what was that movie called? That comedy? Oh, the, um, the, My, Mighty the Mighty Wind. Yes. Yeah. What yeah. were your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I, I loved it, first of all. Um, and you know, uh, Christopher Guest is just brilliant. And the, the Mighty Wind was so beautiful because, well, first of all, I, okay, second of all, I already said first, <laughs> second of all, I know some people, <clears throat> some people in a, in a particular folk group who are, they're not in the group anymore, but they, they were not happy with it because they thought that, uh, they thought that, that Christopher was making such fun of, of the whole genre and everything, when in fact he was lovingly portraying all of these people and Mickey and you know and the, the, the Kiss and all of the ballads and all, great music, they wrote great songs. But um, no, overall it was, just, it was just great, all the little things they pulled. And you know that they, that they actually did, um, uh, uh, what was their name? The, uh, the group that they had. Oh, a spinal tap, right? Oh, right. So yeah, spinal, yeah. spinal tap would go out and actually do shows, but they would open for spinal tap as the folksman. They would actually dress up as, quite frankly, <laughs> right. as us, as us with those things that we used to wear ascots, you know, and do it. So they would open the spinal tap concert as the folksman and then go back and change and become Spinal Tap. And nobody ever knew the difference, but I think that's where they, they got some of the footage. For the that movie. is great. Oh but it was God. beautifully rendered and just lovingly done and uh, just uh, just fabulous. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> that was a great movie. Yeah. yeah, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, that's for sure. Absolutely, that yeah. is. Yeah. Well, we'll, we're giving you a hug. And, Thank you. Uh, and Lonnie, and uh, we uh, we hope to see you all soon. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure and a joy, and uh, best regards and much success to uh, all of your students here and to everybody and your faculty and everybody in the student body. You know, there's light at the end of the tunnel here, folks. We're going to be yeah. on stage. All of us are going to be out there pretty soon. So uh, we'll see you on stage, huh? Yes, yeah. Well, well, Bob, if you ever get a chance, we'd love you to come down to the studio when we're back open. Oh, cool. Yes. All right. Let's and, do it. And we could do like, we could even do like a songwriting workshop or oh, like, cool. sure. you know, like, like an exhibition, like that'd be fun. It'd be really fun. I would love to have you and get your insight and. That's a great idea. So fun. Count me in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I would be honored. Thank you I'll, so I'll much. I'll bring extra pencils. <laughs> oh, good. 
Come on. Bring those little yeah. bowling pencils. You know the little oh, ones? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the little short ones. Yeah, the real short ones, you know? <laughs> Get a better grip on those for some yeah. reason. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Oh